Okay, so this is a chapter one, chapter one, and read one A. This is what we call the perfect guess. And we also call ideal guess. Okay? And this is a guess that, that works well for, and then the, I, I guess, overview. I'm going to talk about meaning of pressure one more time. What do you mean by volume? temperature and the volume. And some people call the EOS, and that's an equation of state that I'm going to cover through. And then uh, the second topic that I'm going to do is what's called the concept about partial pressure. I think this topic covered in the general chemistry, partial pressure, and then this something called relative humidity is something that we're going to go at a, at a practice problem. Uh, Deal with the numbers. So I think I, I cover the first portion about the pressure, and the pressure is uh, essentially force per unit area. Right? So therefore, pressure times volume is an energy. That's the one meaning. And also, if you apply the pressure, if you compress if you compress the gas, you bring the molecule together. So increasing pressure means intermolecular distance is decreasing. And those are the two things that you can think about. I and mean, the pressure increase means the volume decrease. And so you can, you can think about what's happening to the gas molecule when, when their volume is getting smaller and smaller. So once again, the pressure has a unit. And make sure you are versatile with a unit of Pascal, ATM, bar, HG, we also call Porcelli, and PSI. And this is a unit conversion pumps you have to get uh, familiar with, changing from one quantity to the other. And the second one is a T, which is temperature. And I think the temperature in a unit of Kelvin is a temperature in a unit of Celsius, 273.95. And what, what happened was people actually measure, let's say I can measure the volume or it's actually one over density, okay? which is a proportional to volume and I can change the temperature. And this is what people do in all days. So you can have an ice bucket, and that's a zero, zero degree C. Let's say that this is a zero degree C, and this is a zero, and they can measure the density, right? And you can kind of bring the warm water, you can measure that, the, the density goes down because they are expanding it. So they kind of do this, and, and also you can have a, you know, you, can, you guys can have a salt water, Ice water, can you make an ice cream using salt water and ice? You can go down to my minus 30 degrees or something. So you, you can continue to do. And if you do that, and what the fundamental question is, is there any temperature at which you are expected to happen when the volume or uh, uh, density goes, everything is hit, uh, converges? And the volume starts to go to zero in the point. And that happened to be 273.1 C. The physics near the absolute Kelvin in this temperature is different. And there is a whole thing about Bose-Einstein condensation and people still have a very interested in. But the whole idea itself is this unit number that we, are, we have to use a number of temperature. This zero degree C and 100 degree C was just a easier, convenient, uh, reference using the water. But think about it, the water boils at 100 degrees C. Do you think the water boils at 100 degrees C? Pure water? Yes. If you go to the Denver, it will not boil at 100 degrees C, right? Because of the, it's, it's a balance between the ambient pressure and how much of the vapor pressure they can have. So this is even ambiguous. Right? So there are, there are people start to do something. I think the concept about the temperature has to be always in the unit of 
uh, absolute temperature. Uh, Kelvin is the second one. Uh, and the, I think the meaning of, of the talk about meaning of T. T is essentially energy. Okay? T is an, it's a very big source of energy. And I, I am going to say internal energy is a function of temperature only for ideal gas. And the internal energy can should be a temperature and something else. And uh, people can pick two, and uh, this is a volume is most convenient choice for real. Real gas, even liquid, anything that is not ideal gas, they are, they are different. So the consequences of that <coughs> is, in this case, I can happily write this way, du dt. Whereas this one is, you have to write round okay, partial differential of t, and you have to define other quantities such as this one. Okay? And that's, uh, that's a definition of heat capacity at constant volume. This is the same thing, but this is only for uh, the ideal gas situation. So make sure that this is just a unique case because we are dealing with an ideal gas. That in general, we are going to deal with this one in, in later in the future. So that's that's a subject in the in the chapter two. Okay, so we just want to. I just give a meaning that this one is actually mainly the main factor of the energy. You can see that. And the, the last one is a volume. And volume is. I think that I don't have to say anything more than that. But problem with the volume is what we call the extensive property. It, it depends on the amount of the gas in your system. So people want to normalize by the number of moles. And this is what we call the molar volume. Then this is, a, what, this is now in, intrinsic property. Intrinsic property is good because if you double the, the size, volume doubles. But the, if you double the size, pressures and the temperature, they are not changing it. And so it's an intrinsic property. And this dm is an intrinsic, whereas uh, this one is an extensive. So we are mainly actually ended up using this one more often than the volume, uh, given that number of moles and gas in the system. I. Once again, what's the meaning of the volume? I think the volume speaks for itself. But well, once again, the volume times pressure is an energy. And I, I cannot overemphasize on that. And then now I'm going to expand this one to NRP. So this is an energy, right? So that's an energy. It's an energy. And so therefore, it boils down to this equation for perfect S. Uh, so that's why it has a unit of ATM times liter, moles times Kelvin, or people use joule and mole. Okay. So that, that was a quiz problem that conversion between ATM liter to the joule is something that you should know. And this is, I'm telling you for the last time, one liter is 1,000, this one, or another way, this one, 1,000 liter, okay? So make sure that you understand that one liter is handful, whereas a one square meter is pretty big. And the size of this desk is uh, about one square meter. So make sure that this unit, which is a Pascal times this one, you see this the conversion, the differences, and you should make a note on that. Okay. So, number two. 
equation of state is actually this is a very big word equation of state equation of state means that uh, people like to express pressure which is an indication of the, the interaction of the gas molecule and that we can easily measure should be a function of temperature and the volume for a given n. So that's a really generic statement. So this is a tricky for me to say. If I know my temperature and the volume, do I know my pressure, what it should be for a real gas system? Do I know? Hmm? We do not know, okay? We can measure that, but at the same time, these three are bound by the equation of state. So what I'm saying is these three are not independent. We have to measure it independently to understand the interactions and that comes the subject in the last portion of this chapter. But these three equations, three variables, pressure, volume, temperature, they are bound together. So only two are independent. This one is a dependent on this. We just do not have a prior knowledge is what, what the value should be. Does it make sense? So, I mean, the one thing that people do, I'm going to jump ahead, saying that uh, so this is a, a volume over volume. Uh, in the, this is an ideal gas, and then this is a P3. That's, I'm going off. I don't need to go ahead a little bit. It came to my mind that I, I can talk to you guys like this. RT of P, yes. NRT. If, if we measure all of them, we know something about, it's called a compressibility. that we're going to talk about, and that's something about, we, can, we know about the interaction. Okay? So that's uh, something that we know. So what I'm saying here is, these three are not independent each other. <coughs> there are only two in, in, uh, independent variables. So you need, when you measure three order values, we gain something about interaction between molecules, whether they're attractive motions or impulsive motions uh, are there. So, that's a very generic statement. And then, then you guys know P should be a function called NRT over V. That's the one equation of state. The second equation of state is, oh, I think that this one should be, there is a, some excluded volume, so we have to compensate. So this is a volume correction. And then the, the pressure correction in the form of an interaction, NV squared. So this here, I'm going to talk about this one uh, later in the Van der Waals test. The, this, this is a, essentially what I want to show here is volume, temperature, and these are the, all the variables that is uh, intrinsic to the types of gases. And then we have a predictive pressure uh, that is going to be, and predicted by equation of state. Okay? So all I'm saying is only two. It can be this, or it can be temperature, pressure, or temper pressure and volume. Only two are independent variables. Okay? The third one is always dependent. We just do not know the good equation for some cases that has a very strong interactions. Any questions so far? Is everything good? Am I going too fast? Or just about right?
So let me talk about the partial pressure. Uh, okay. So when you have a mixture of gas, gas mixtures, we call the partial pressure. And this is what we call the PI and with a subscript. And this is different from total pressure. This is what we simply call P. Okay? Well, sometimes people call P total when you're dealing with a bunch of pressures. But it, is, it is a P. So this is a perfect case. In this room, there is a nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, a little bit of CO2 and argon and stuff like that. They all bounce it to exert the pressures. Okay? But what this is, I think that you have seen this one even in the general chemistry, partial pressure is small fraction of any types of gas times total pressure. Sometimes people call it just partial pressure is small fraction times total pressure. And this, this, what this equation, seemingly very simple equation, what they imply is this nitrogen, oxygen, when they colliding and exert the pressure, they are being counted equally. Does it make sense? So what I'm saying is, which is a heavier molecule? This is a heavier. Am I right? They are heavy. So this is like a basketball. This is like, I don't know, soccer ball. And argon, probably something like two. Something like, I don't know, volleyball or something. And I'm, I'm telling you that if I, if I throw the ball, the each impact, whether it's throw the ping pong ball, basketball, whatever ball I'm bouncing as a gas molecule, they count it in the same way. Okay? And uh, the secret is this gas molecule, their energy is defined by temperature. Because of that, although oxygen is heavier, they are moving slower compared to a lighter gas. Each impact 